Red squirrels are the only squirrel native to the British Isles. They are tree living squirrels and trees provide shelter and the majority of their food. Red squirrels are at their most agile and fastest in the branches using their tail for balance. They can also rotate their hind legs making running down trees as easy as running up them. They can move pretty fast on the ground as well but are more vulnerable to predation. The average weight of an adult is only about 300 grams so they're light enough to access the very tips of branches. An adult measures around 20 centimetres body length with the tail almost doubling the overall length. There's no difference in size or colour between males and females and age isn't associated with colour either. Colours can vary enormously, even from silver grey through to virtually black. Starting with January, we look at a red squirrel's life through the year. And no, they don't hibernate, as many people think they do. If the autumn seed crop was good, the squirrels should have enough stored food to see them through until the spring. They will also supplement their diet with other food such as lichen and mycelium found under bark. And also take advantage of food put out in gardens where they can. It's thought they use a map in their head, coupled with a keen sense of smell, to relocate their hordes, which are usually buried in the ground. For squirrels who are over a year old, it's the beginning of the breeding season. The breeding season lasts through until the autumn, when the male's testes shrink back into the abdomen and the females do not come into season. Whilst males are in breeding condition for 9 to 10 months of the year, mature red squirrel females generally only come into estrus, or season, for one day twice a year. A few days before she's fit to mate, the female gives off chemical signals, called pheromones, that can attract males from around a kilometre away, and mating chases ensue. This is as far as Dad's duty goes, and he's off in pursuit of other females, leaving the expectant mother to build the family home and rear the babies alone. Roughly six weeks after mating, she gives birth to, on average, two or three kittens, as baby squirrels are called. Mother has four pairs of teats and suckles the babies for about ten weeks. By two weeks old, they are covered in fine hair and already have a flea burden. Not keeping the fleas down can lead to problems, such as anemia, particularly in young animals. Squirrels build more than one dray, so they can move home when the build-up of parasites become too much. This mother was moving her babies by carrying them in her mouth. Ears and eyes open and teeth appear at about four weeks of age. Then at seven weeks old, although still very small, the youngsters start to follow mother from the nest and begin to try solid food. It's a risky time. They may get left behind or predated. Sometimes they're picked up and a hand reared before being released back to the wild. At 12 to 14 weeks old, the kittens are ready to leave home 
and siblings may stay together to start with. They need to find their own home range, which means competing with adult squirrels, and they must build a dray. Drays are solid structures, about 30 centimetres in diameter, and usually built high up in a tree, either in the fork or resting on a branch against the trunk. There are twigs on the outside, but the inside is lined out with softer materials, such as moss, animal hair, stripped honeysuckle bark, or dried leaves, or soft materials from a washing line in your garden. Tree hollows make good nesting sites as well, and are called dens. Males generally cover a wider range, especially once the breeding season starts. There's no definitive range size, as much depends on the tree species within the wood, food production and the time of year. For the most part, red squirrels are solitary animals, but will share a dray in order to survive cold weather. By the spring, when the first litter of squirrels are leaving the nest, food is shorter, making survival that much harder. If most of the stored caches have been used, shoots, buds and insects are on the menu. Statistics show that only around one in six red squirrels survive to see their first birthday. Food shortage, stress, disease and predation by birds and other mammals are all risks that the young squirrels face. The fittest and luckiest may live up to six years old in the wild, but most don't see their first birthday. Late spring is also time for the first molt of the year, which starts at the head and works back to the tail. The tail and ear tufts only molt once in the year. Some animals become almost bald during the molt. Trees such as witch elm produce seeds in the early summer and Scots pine cones are eaten in June, although they are still green at this time. Wild cherry and ash also provide some food early in the summer. Red squirrels are opportunistic feeders and spend 60 to 80% of their time foraging. They need to eat about 20% of their body weight daily to stay fit. The rest of their active time is spent in grooming, dray building, and chasing. The squirrel's day is longer at this time of year 
as they rise at dawn and retire at dusk, but may go back to their dray for a rest during the day. Feeding peaks at dawn and dusk all year, whilst during the long days of summer they also feed around late afternoon. Around the beginning of August, hazelnuts begin to ripen and the hungry squirrels will start eating them before they're fully ripe. They notch the top of the nut and split it in half. Nibbling hard shells help keep their teeth, which grow throughout their life, in shape. A squirrel with a tooth problem will not last long. When walking in the woods, look out for the discarded hazel shells. Other animals eat hazelnuts, but the squirrel is the only one that notches the top and actually splits in half. You may also find the remains of fir cones eaten by squirrels. If you're very sharp-eyed, you might even spot squirrel droppings. If reds are to survive the winter, they need to gain 10% of their body weight, so a good autumn seed crop is essential to their survival. Excess food is cached to help through the winter months. They are also partial to fungi. And also berries. Autumn is when they stop breeding so they can concentrate on gathering this glut of fruit and seed. Although they can't digest the tannins in acorns very well, they will still forage for them. The second molt starts around October. This time it starts at the base of the tail and works forward. And the iconic ear tufts that were molted in the spring grow back again. If the autumn seed crop is poor, as sometimes happens, then fewer young squirrels may survive and the older or weaker adults will die as well. Each woodland has its carrying capacity. That is, it can only produce so much food to feed a finite number of animals who are competing for food and space to ensure their own survival. In other words, it's survival of the fittest. The Isle of Wight is lucky enough to have dormice, but no deer in their woods. Woodland ecology is too complex a subject to explore here, but every species plays its part in shaping this diverse habitat. This food was put out to attract squirrels to our members' hide. But a crafty pheasant took advantage. Red squirrels do have their own illnesses and parasites. But they are mammals and share a similar physiology to humans and some of their health problems, such as pneumonia, hepatitis, cancer, and, as recently discovered, leprosy. Life may seem to hang on a thread, but as squirrels have been around for millennia, their survival strategy must be sound. Left to their own devices, squirrels are very successful overall and will probably be around for many more millennia but for human intervention.
Here on the Isle of Wight, we do not have grey squirrels as there is no fixed link. So our conservation work is different to other parts of the UK. Monitoring, which is undertaken by White Squirrel Project, is an important part of any red squirrel work and there are various ways of going about it without disturbing the squirrels. As we saw earlier, squirrels leave feeding signs and looking for them is one way to monitor where squirrels are. The general public reports squirrels as a sighting, dead or alive, usually a one-off on a specific day and the data is put into a program especially designed for White Squirrel Project. As well as giving an overall picture of how the squirrels are doing, it can pinpoint black spots on our roads and crossing points and road signs may be strategic place. A volunteer with a head for heights must go up the tree and fill up the food hoppers regularly. This is to encourage the squirrels to cross via the trees but will only work if there is no garden feeding on either side of the road. Dead squirrels provide a lot of information, whether they are just reported as a roadkill or they are retrieved for post-mortem examination. Only bodies that are very fresh and have no damage to the body, so that the organs can be examined, are suitable. If pathology is found, then samples are sent to various labs for analysis. As a result of this work, scientific papers have been written. Although the Isle of Wight is a red squirrel stronghold with no grey squirrels, we do get reports of greys sometimes. Thankfully, these generally turn out to be a red squirrel with a grey coat. Very occasionally, a dead grey is found on the road, or it may stow away on a ferry. So in effect, we do monitor for grey squirrels as well as red. If a grey squirrel is suspected, then, apart from sightings, other non-invasive ways to monitor are used. Hair tubes are simply a piece of drain pipe cut into 30 cm lengths. A sticky pad is placed either end and food put in the middle. The squirrel goes in to take the food and leaves hairs on the sticky pad, which are examined under a microscope. Red squirrel hairs have a distinct groove down their length, but greys do not. As well as monitoring, we take in sick, injured and baby squirrels. Road casualties are common and usually fatal, but occasionally a squirrel is just concussed and shocked and ready for release after a day or two. Some illnesses can be treated with antibiotics if caught early enough. But success rate on most squirrel diseases is not good, as by the time you can catch the squirrel, it is often too late. Even the very small squirrels that arrive, with eyes still closed, instinctively know how to open nuts and cones, make a dray and clean themselves. Up until they're about 12 weeks old, they are keen to play. Hair makes good bedding. Then they get the call of the wild and are not always so friendly and sometimes hard to catch for release. Before they are released, they are put in a cage so they can get used to the sights and sounds and smells of the wood 
and then about 10 days later they are let go into the wild. Dedicated volunteers monitor a woodland transect twice a year during early spring and autumn. The recorder stands for five minutes looking for squirrel activity and then walks 100 metres in five minutes and repeats this for up to 1200 metres. The walk starts at dawn as this is when the squirrels are most active. Any squirrels spotted are recorded giving the distance away, what they were doing and the tree species they were seen in. Sometimes we undertake small woodland management and tree planting projects. These are usually community projects and local people, including Green Jim, come along to help out. Information and advice is given out via the website, phone calls, leaflets, newsletters and at shows. Education is the main thrust of the Isle of Wight Red Squirrel Trust's work. This may be in schools, clubs or on public walks and fundraising events. remains healthy and it remains vigorous and it remains numerous. And that is why there is a, a, a slight problem of... As you can see, Red Squirrel work is dependent on support from the general public. Whether it's phoning in a sighting, helping with more practical tasks, or by giving a donation. And let's face it, our red squirrels are well worth it. And we must ensure the Isle of Wight stays a grey-free zone. Here are a few suggestions on where to look for red squirrels on the Isle of Wight. Alverston Mead is popular and the squirrels are used to people. Osborne House in East Cows. Quar Abbey has a hide and our own members only hide is nearby. Robin Hill is another good place that has a hide. When in Shanklin Old Village, visit the Chine, Realston Gardens and Tower Gardens. In Ventnor, go to Ventnor Botanic Gardens. Fort Victoria in Yarmouth has a woodland walk and the squirrels are fed behind the railway exhibit. The Garlic Farm Cafe near Newchurch is where you can eat your lunch whilst watching the squirrels eat theirs. If you are in Allen Bay, visit the Largesse Garden. Mr and Mrs Thompson helped raise money to produce this film. Good luck and don't forget to tell White Squirrel Project if you do see a squirrel.